The Life and Sad Ending of Tommy Sands Tommy Sands was born Thomas Adrian Sands on August 27, 1937. Sands was born into a musical family in Chicago, Illinois. His father, Ben, was a pianist, and his mother, Grace, a big band singer. He moved with the family to Shreveport, Louisiana. He began playing the guitar at eight and within a year had a job performing twice weekly on a local radio station. At the beginning of his teen years, he moved to Houston, Texas, where he attended Lamar High School and joined a band with Jimmy Lee Durden and the Junior Cowboys, consisting of Sands, Durden, and Billy Reno. They performed on radio, at county fairs, and did personal appearances. He was only 15 when Colonel Tom Parker heard about him and signed him to RCA Records. Through difficult times, when love is a luxury to him, Tommy Sands and singer Nancy Sinatra married in 1960 and divorced in 1965. His career had declined significantly by 1965, triggering speculation that Frank Sinatra had him blacklisted in the entertainment industry after their divorce. Such reports were denied by both Sands and Sinatra. In 1974, Sands married Sheila Wallace, a secretary, in Honolulu, where he had relocated in an attempt to revive his career. He continues to make occasional public singing appearances. Sands' initial recordings achieved little in the way of sales but in early 1957 he was given the opportunity to star in an episode of Kraft Television Theater called The Singing Idol. He played the part of a singer who was very similar to Elvis Presley, with guitar, pompadour hair, and excitable teenage fans. On the show, his song presentation of a Joe Allison composition called Teenage Crush went over big with the young audience and, released as a single by Capitol Records, it went to number two on the Billboard Hot 100 record chart and number one on the Cashbox chart. It became a gold record. His track, The Old Oaken Bucket, peaked at number 25 on the UK singles chart in 1960. He released his debut album Steady Date with Tommy Sands. Sands' sudden fame brought an offer to sing at the Academy Awards show. He did another episode of Kraft Television Theater, Flesh and Blood playing the son of a gangster. He also made the promise for Zane Grey Theater playing the son of Gary Merrill. Sands' teen idol looks landed him a motion picture contract with 20th Century Fox to star in a 1958 musical drama called Sing, Boy, Sing, the feature film version of The Sing and Idol. Fox had enjoyed success with films starring other teen idols such as Elvis Presley and Pat Boone but Sing, Boy, Sing was a financial failure. Sands appeared on CBS television on January 9, 1958 in an episode of Shower of Stars, and played another singing star in the left-handed welcome for Studio One in Hollywood. Sands supported Pat Boone in a musical for Fox, Mardi Gras, which was a moderate hit. He also released the album Sands Storm, This Thing Called Love, and When I Am Thinking of You. Sands appeared in the 1960 episode of Wagon Train titled The Larry Hanafi Story, and also a later Wagon Train episode in 1963, The Gus Morgan Story. His later albums included Sands at the Sands and Dream with Me. From May to November 1960, he served in the United States Air Force Reserves. Sands' second lead role in a feature was in the teen comedy Love in a Goldfish Bowl with Fabian Forte, which was not a success. More popular was a fantasy musical he made at Disney, Babes in Toyland, co-starring Annette Funicello. That year he and Funicello sang the Sherman Brothers title song from the Walt Disney release of The Parent Trap. Sands guested starred on The Inner Panic for the United States Steel Hour and were one of several pop stars who played U.S. Rangers in Fox's The Longest Day. Sands had married Nancy Sinatra whose father Frank offered Sands a role in Come Blow Your Horn but he turned it down. Sands studied acting in New York. Sands appeared alongside Fred Astaire in Blow High, Blow Clear for Alcoa Theater. On May 14, 1963, 
Sands appeared, along with Claude Akins and Jim Davis, in Trapped, one of the last episodes of NBC's Laramie Western series. In the storyline, the series character Slim Sherman finds an injured kidnapped victim in the woods, portrayed by Joan Freeman. Dennis Holmes, as series regular Mike Williams, rides away to seek help, but the kidnappers reclaim the hostage. Slim pursues the kidnappers but is mistaken as a third kidnapper by the girl's father, played by Barton McLean. Sands plays the girl's boyfriend, who had been ordered by her father to stop seeing her. Later in 1963, Sands made several appearances on Wagon Train including the Davy Baxter story, the Gus Morgan story, and the Bob Stewart story. Sands had a support role in the feature film Ensign Pulver at Warner's. He guest starred on Slattery's People and had a support role in the war feature None But the Brave, starring and directed by Frank Sinatra. Sands divorced Nancy Sinatra in 1965. The doors to Hollywood seemed to slam shut after the divorce from Nancy, he said. I couldn't get acting roles. My singing career on TV and in films was over. His last feature to date was The Violent Ones in which Sands had a supporting role. He moved to Hawaii in 1967. In Hawaii, Sands operated the Tommy Sands nightclub tour for five years, opened the Outrigger main showroom, and ran a clothing distributorship. He married a second time and became a father. Sands' later appearances include more episodes of Hawaii 5 hit Gun for Sale, a Sentence to Steal, and the Hardy Boys Nancy Drew Mysteries Mystery on the Avalanche Express. He occasionally returned to the mainland to work, appearing in Dinner Theater. Sands returned permanently to the mainland of the U.S. in 1981, settling in Fort Wayne, Indiana. He toured regularly performing concerts. That is his life story. He is 83 years old this year. Time does not make us forget the past years, memories of joy and sadness intertwined.